Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Kind of quiet tonight. You all right? Everybody all right? Spending time in the Word, thinking about the Lord, praying, praying for each other. Everything okay? I hope so. hope your faith is strong. Let's begin with a word of prayer and then I'd like to go back to where we are studying through. We made a great leap. We're off of, we were one page for about six weeks and we made it off of that page tonight and I'm happy for it. Utilizing the power of God's word for living, specifically in the area of myself, my sinful self. I hope you're learning about yourself through this and identifying things about who you are and what you can be for the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I pray that you'll take this time. I pray that you'll revive us. Use your word, Lord. Help me to settle down a little bit. All these people have so much on their minds, Father. We come to this sacred word. There are people who need this. I need it. I ask, Lord, that you would speak the right words tonight, your words. Help me, Lord, not to take license in any way. But I ask, Father, that you'd help me to preach the word and make good application and allow the Holy Spirit to work where the Holy Spirit wants to work. Thank you for the wonderful day that we had, Father. I praise you for a beautiful Delaware day. I praise you, Father, for the opportunity to be able to know each other in this good church and to encourage each other up here at the church, the pillar and the ground of truth, as your word says. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, tonight we want to continue this study. And we want to look specifically more about this matter of ourself. <clears throat> I want you to notice we finally got off of the revealing uh, list on page 98. If you're following along in your handbook, it's not too late to get a handbook. We're only about midway through. I would encourage you to get it, all right? I know it, it, you're not too old to learn new tricks, all right? You're not, I'm not, you guys got to say, I, I'm not too dumb to learn something new, all right? I am not too far gone to learn how to do some specific Bible study and to be able to study some things from a godly man by the name of Dr. Ketchum who has devoted his ministry to help people like us and a great godly pastor in the ministry for many, many years. So I would encourage you to get one if you haven't got one. We're going to skip right over page 99 and 100. I would encourage you to do that study. That's called Breaking the Shackles of Spiritual Bondage. It's a lot about Galatians 4 and Romans chapter 8 that we have covered recently. So we're not going to deal with those things. But tonight I want to start by asking you a question as we go on to page 101 and beyond in your handbook, but specifically as we go to the Word, okay? I want to begin by asking this question. Is it hard for you or is it hard to see faults in yourself and why is it hard? Is it hard to see faults in yourself and why? Someone give me an answer to this. Pride. So the first question is, or first answer is yes, it is hard to see faults in yourself. Okay. Somebody else. Okay. Okay. That's kind of interesting. She touched on something at the beginning. Certain faults are hard to see. And then there's a whole other side of this. We're not going to deal with this, but I want you to understand there is the opposite of that where you can only see faults in yourself, okay? And then you're morbid, morbidly introspective in ways that the devil uses that you never resolve anything. You just stay in that. But we're talking more of what Clyde was talking about, about being hard to see because of pride. Is it hard? I'll throw out the question. I want to hear what you say. Is it hard to see faults in yourself? Have you experienced that it's hard to see faults in yourself and why? Okay, you learn that your you, you learn that your facial expressions are so readable, okay, and that it you people know what you're thinking. That's not always good. All right, I would not become a professional gambler, Al. That would not work for you. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. What else? What are else your thoughts? Yes, brother. Brother Lit. Okay, that's a good perspective. All right, is it hard to see faults in yourself and why? Yes, Nancy.
Okay, that's it. Okay, and sometimes that's a long period of time, and I assume that some of you are like me, that your answer to this is that you argue that you justify things even stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until the bottom falls out, and you find out that you really were wrong. Okay, yes? Right, and that alleviates, you know, the faults in yourself. Yes? Right. Yeah, I think that that humbling thing many times is not is not wrong in that God has to crush us and show us what we really are, and we find our goodness in Him, and we find any good attributes attributes in ourselves as something that the Holy Spirit has worked in us and th and through us. But you're right; you're exactly right. Most of us probably have the other problem, though, in a lot of ways that we get ourselves into habits. I'll kind of connect all these together. We get ourselves into habits for an extended period of time, maybe, that uh, we justify, that, and we cannot, because of pride, see things within ourselves that are, are really ruts and bent places in our heart. And a lot of times, does it bring some great crisis or a great rebuke or, a, or your wife getting extremely mad at you or a friend like yelling at you and say, you're, you know, you're so pig-headed in this area, or you know, sometimes it, it takes that and it's unfortunate that it has to come to that place. But the premise here is just simply that it's hard to see faults in ourselves. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12 says this. It says, for the word of God is quick. What does that mean? Someone yell it out. We don't, we don't use this word like this anymore. Alive. alive. Very good. Living. Alive. And powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Remember that because we're going to come back to the armor of God uh, on Sunday night, two Sunday nights from now continued with that two-edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart neither is there any creature that's not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do because it's so hard to see our own problems and our flawed character and our bad attitudes and our sinful perspectives tonight we're going to take God's word and we're going to try to show us some common things about each, each other. You know, you apply it to yourself. I'll apply it to myself is what I'm really trying to say. But there are some common things which within ourself that addresses the first question I ask you. Why is it so hard to see faults and what are these underlying kind of faults? As you look at the passage that we just read, we see something about this word of God. It's a famous passage and we're very familiar with it that the Word of God is a two-edged sword, okay? We'll talk about that some other time, but we normally think of this as an offensive weapon to use against the devil because sp specifically about the whole armor of God. We think we kind of go to that idea. And there's more to say about that, but I'm not going to say it. But we normally think about that. But I, wanna, I want you to look at, stare at verse 12 for me. Everybody stare there. I'm going to ask you this. In just a few words, maybe one, two, three words, four words maybe, Tell me according to that verse, not according to what you learned for 20 years in Sunday school. According to this verse, verse number 12, what is the function of God's word according to this verse? Or one of the functions specifically of this, what is the function of the word of God here? Okay, but I want you to get real specific here. What is it? I want you to look at 12 and your answer has got to come from 12. Okay, convict. Okay, I think that that's an application of it, but really, what is it? Okay, piercing. We're getting on track here with real words. Okay, use some real, re, use some verse twelve words. Okay, now it's it's supposed to be a knife. So put, give me the function. If I pulled out a real, I don't have it. Pat, where's Doctor Bish? If I pulled out a real knife tonight, no, that's a gun. That's not a knife. Just, it's not real. <laughs> Okay, if I pulled out a real two-edged sword here tonight, knife, and I ask you, what is the function of this? You guys wouldn't give me spiritual answers. I'm asking. This is a very physical verse in verse 12. What is the function of that knife? It, to, not to stab. Not even. Not, look, it's not really pierce. Okay.